hasn't taken off even faster. And I think it's just that the word isn't out there. And like I say, you have to try it to believe it. And it's just amazing. And I think once the grants come through or there's more um, public knowledge of it, people are going to eat it up because this is what is needed to help fix the problems of the environment. We have the answers, guys. We've got an electric Jeep that we're putting together right now that will have a range that's phenomenal. How's that? Well, it'll do about 150 for a top end. 150 miles an hour? Yeah, it'll have a range of about at 120 miles, single charge at 70 miles an hour. Okay, well, what about, uh, just real quick, and why? If you, if, you, if you put a hybrid or make it a hybrid, we have the technology to actually give it a 500 mile range on a gallon of gasoline. On a gallon of gasoline. 500 miles. Okay, well, here's my thing. Is there's people out here, and I, I know that everybody knows this. There's people out that uh, you got these corporations that are trying, you know, to do the green thing. They're trying to put the batteries into the automobiles, the batteries into the cars, and they say, I mean, just right now, the technology that we have, it's going to cost uh, consumers anywhere between, you know, 120 to 200 thousand dollars just for the car itself. And you're saying that you actually have something that's possible? Is it in production? I mean, are you? Do you have the technology? I mean, you have it. We have it right now. Sorry. You have it right now, to where you could put it into an automobile. But what's it going to cost consumers? I mean, we're talking millions of dollars. You know. Uh, February 19, 2009, President Obama signed into law that anybody converting or having an electric motor vehicle on the road will get a $7,500 cash rebate on their taxes. So they get money back for uh, what we're doing. purchasing a vehicle that, that we, we can recall. We can repower a car with kits, put America to work, and they can repower their existing car that's currently on the road, get rid of their gas guzzler, get rid of their gasoline that's on there, and actually drive their car. How long do you think it'll take for this kind of technology? To, I mean, actually, depends on America. In. If uh, say somebody contacted you via your site right now, they're watching this and they say, "Hey, you know, that's a fantastic idea. What do I, how do I do it? How do what do I do? How, how long is it going to take for you to actually start putting these into production? What do you need? We need money. Money. Money's always good. What we need to do is get the people together. The investors will be good. And once we have the cash flow right there. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to turn around and we're going to take and train people to actually install our products. So your local garages will be able to come in, take out your existing gas customer, put it in a big heap or recycle, put in a new drive units inside of there and battery packs and you can run. Once we get the regeneration unit perfected 100% and out to the public, there's no reason right now we can't take an electric car and drive from here to Florida and back from Washington to Florida and never stop to recharge. On one charge? Actually, it'll be continuous. Whoa, whoa, power okay. units have a 30-year life. So you can take the power unit, put it into a new vehicle, to a new vehicle, to a new vehicle. So you recycle the power regeneration units. With no plugging in? No. There's no? Think, no. But the thing is, is that we can, we're going to put plugs on them so that a car can pull into their driveway or pull into their house or into the garage, plug it in and supplement part of their electrical power bill. Which means... To supplement to, what was that like? Get, what, what is that? That means supplement. you're driving a generator on four wheels that you drive to and from work. And at nighttime, you're reducing the greenhouse gases because the generation on the grid has dropped down. So now the impact on the environment is even further reduced. You gotta remember, this boat here, because it's full of electric, right? His power bill dropped on this boat. He lives in Morty's boat. The power bill actually dropped. That means the greenhouse gases dropped in the earth because he's generating or using less electricity. So what, what, what do they compensate you for? What, what, what happens? So you plug in your, uh, your automobile that regenerates itself. And what, do you get compensated? Or? They have to pay you back. The law says that for everything that you put back to the grid, they gotta pay you. So what happens here is now your car pays you to own it. So you're paid to own your car. You're paid to own your automobile. That's right. Paid to own your automobile. You generate power back to the grid, less dams, less hydroelectricity, less fossil fuels, less nuclear power, less pollution. And this can all be done within the next 
we can do it now. Right now, right now. Right now. If you had the people, if you had the people that you could put into... In, no. In, no, we have to get the people together. So the thing is, is that it's going to take money. We have the technology to do it. We have the knowledge to do it. We're even, we even got a small shop that now we're moving into a bigger shop that we're going to actually start producing some of these items out of there. And it'll be available on the website. And but once we grow big enough, what we want to do is we want to put these in production nationwide and then worldwide. So the, so the, the uh, addiction to fuel or gasoline and oil is either dramatically reduced or totally eliminated. We can't really totally eliminate it because we use plastics. Plastics come from the ground, they come from oil. Petroleum. From petroleum-based products. Eventually we'll run out of fuel, what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to have to go to our food sources, making corn oil, making plant-based oils in order to make plant-based plastics, which might not be a bad idea. <laughs> no, no, no. But biodegradable also. Very biodegradable. And the other thing is, is that, you know, we got big ships out there, like the Exxon Valdez that dumped all that oil and killed all the wildlife. Right. They're still cleaning up after that. They're still paying the residuals. Yeah, on. people think that just because it happened 15 years ago that it's a done deal, but they don't realize that it's still, it's still affecting, affecting the ecosystem, the everything. Exactly. We're the about damage, out of time. I'm the damage is out. done, is done. Now okay. it's time to make the change. So in closing? Our vice, our former vice president, Al Gore, is on the right track. He's on the right track. The world is dying, and we need to do something now. And it's going to make a difference with us, or our kids will have nothing. There'll be no world to leave our children. It'll be over. It'll be done.